Once upon a time, long ago, in a faraway land, there lived a princess known for her arrogance and unmerciful behavior. She was the daughter of the wealthiest and most powerful king in all of the land. Her name was Princess Adora. She was indeed a very beautiful young woman, but she was rude and thought of herself specially made by the gods, believing that no man deserved to have her as her husband. She thought she was better than everyone else and treated her servant and everyone she met with disrespect. Princess Adora had a younger sister, Chioma. They were the only children of their parents, which made Princess Adora the heir to the throne. She was so loved by her parents that they gave her everything she wanted and spoiled her with many treasures and servants. The wealth and riches made her so arrogant to the extent that all her servants disliked her, and they gossiped about how rude and wicked she was in her absence. Each time she wanted to move around town, she was surrounded by maid who carried large umbrella to protect her from the sun. She thought she was too beautiful and too much a royalty to be touched by the sun or rain. She did not care if rain touched her servant and traveled with a large convoy of maidens and guards surrounding her. She was indeed a princess of great wealth. One day, while walking through the marketplace, Princess Adora saw an old beggar in rags kneeling before her. The beggar sought her attention, and Adora stopped and asked her why she was so dirty and begging for money. The beggar said, please, I have no money, no home, and no one to help me. I beg you to have mercy on me, she pleaded. Why should I help you or give you anything? You are just a lazy old woman who has refused to work. Go home, I have no money to give to you, Princess Adora replied. The beggar looked up at Princess Adora with sad eyes and said, I am not lazy, I am just old and sick, and I have no one to care for me. Adora laughed and replied, You're just a dirty old woman who is so lazy to work. She continued, You deserve to be thrown in the gutters or jail. Adora turned and walked away, leaving the beggar to fend for herself. But as she walked, she felt a strange sensation all over her body as if something touched her. She stopped and looked around her and scolded her servants and told them they will all be severely punished. But as she was leaving, she fell on her knees and said to the old woman, What have you done to me? Can't you see? I am the heir to the throne. Don't you fear for your life? Then the old woman said, Who are you? You think you are better than anyone else? Adora, still looking at the old woman, in shock said, What have you done? Are you a witch? The beggar smiled wickedly and replied, I have casted a spell on you. From now on, you will walk on fours with horns around night every full moon and you will transform into an animal. And every full moon, you will wander the forest like an animal and eat grass and plants. Adora was terrified this time and she begged the beggar to lift the curse, but she refused. The old woman told her that she must learn to be humble and compassionate and she must find someone who loves her for who she is, even if she transformed to an animal, before the curse can be broken. And that would not be easy. And if in 12 full moons she has not found someone to love her, she would permanently become an animal for the rest of her life. Adora got home and locked herself in her room for days, just sitting in her dimly lit room, looking very worried. Adora tried to keep her transformation a secret but as time went by, she became more and more afraid of the curse. She locked herself in her room and refused to come out. Her sister, Chioma, noticed her sister's odd behavior and tried to talk to her, but she never told her anything nor allowed anyone to come into her room. Towards the end of the month, when it was going to be a full moon, Adora knew it was time for her to wander the forest and eat grass. She left the palace as a human and went into the bush, waiting to transform into a beast. Eventually, her transformation began until she turned into an animal-looking form on her four legs. She wandered into the bush, eating grass till morning. When it was morning, she returned in torn clothes that the villagers were shocked by the princess sight. Another full moon came and the same thing happened. Chioma 
Adora's younger sister was worried about Adora's strange behavior. She noticed her sitting was usually agitated when a full moon was approaching, so Chioma decided to watch and follow her sister closely. Meanwhile, in a nearby village, there lived Bala, the village hunter. Sometimes when he goes on an hunting spree, he stays in the forest for days to catch a good kill. He had a small hunt inside the forest where he laid to rest at night. He never returned home until he gets a good kill. So, on this day, he decided to stay for a month to study the animals and catch a bigger kill this time. The next full moon, Chioma decided to find out the secret behind Adora's disappearance and followed her sister. When she arrived inside the forest, she hid so that Adora would not see her, her heart pounding in her chest as she waited to see what Adora was doing in the forest. Immediately, the moon became full. Light from the moon shined on Adora and she transformed into a hideous beast, one that looked like an animal on four legs. After she transformed, she began to eat grass. Chioma was so terrified and she screamed, Adora, ah! The energy with which she shouted threw her scarf off her head and ran back to the palace to inform her parents. As soon as Adora heard her sister's voice, she ran deep into the forest into Bala's hut. Bala was about to lay down when Adora the beast entered. Bala was terrified and held his spear, but as Adora took one look at Bala, she slumped to the ground and slept off. Bala was still in shock and somehow knew this was no ordinary animal. In the morning, she transformed back to the princess and Bala took care of her, not minding she was a beast the previous night. Meanwhile, at the palace, Chioma went to tell her parents, the king and queen, what she saw. But her parents didn't believe her. Instead, they burst out laughing and saying she was dreaming. But one of the royal servants came up and said to the king that what Chioma, their daughter, was saying was true. This came as a shock to the king and queen, and they began to panic. Later that day, Adora came back to the palace but locked herself in. Chioma told her parents that they should come around midnight during the next full moon to watch Adora transform into a beast. They agreed at around midnight, the next full moon. The king, queen and Chioma crept closer to Adora's room, their hearts pounding in their chests. They opened the door slightly and saw Adora standing in the middle of the room. Her eyes were glowing, changing, and her body began to convulse. She headed for the door to run into the bush, but they held blocked the door in shock to lock her within. But within minutes, she pushed hard against the door with a force no one expected and ran and ran with full speed deep into the bush. Within seconds, she had transformed into a huge beast with four legs and horns and ran to hide in Bala's hut. Everyone in the palace ran after Adora but couldn't find her. She had run into Bala's hut and Bala was less scared of her this time. She looked at him in fright and later slumped and slept off. In the morning, Bala took Princess Adora back to the palace and the whole palace were frightened of her and shocked at Bala's gesture. Unknown to Adora, the king had set up a plan to capture her and lock her in a cage. When Bala left, they opened a cage above her and locked her inside. They wanted to find a cure for her curse, so the king summoned all the village doctors to come look at his daughter. Different physicians, magicians, and even the chief priests came to save the king's daughter Adora from the evil curse. But no one was able to save the princess or lift the curse from him. It was said that the only way the curse would be lifted was to seek help from the person who had placed the curse or she found someone who would marry her for herself and in time, the curse would be lifted. Adora was helpless and devastated. All her servants ran away from her because they were scared of her. Some did not pity her because of her past behavior. The king sent message to all the villages in the land that any man who was brave enough to marry his daughter and love her eventually, he would crown him king and step down as king. He did this because he wanted to save his daughter. But word had traveled far and wide across town and Adora was feared as a beast in the entire kingdom. No one dared ask for her hand in marriage. Four weeks had gone and she was still caged up. It was the last day of the month and a full moon was coming. 
It was the only time for Adora to leave the palace to transform into a beast. But she was caged up. She couldn't leave. She struggled to leave, but it was no use. Once it was midnight, Adora's body began to convulse and her body swelled. Within seconds, she had transformed into a huge beast with four legs and two horns. She had come out of the cage looking transformed and very, very angry. She ran for her life and some guards pursued her and one them threw a spear at her to stop her, but she kept on running deep into the forest and never came back. She sustained an injury from the weapon in her skin and the pain was so unbearable that she passed out as soon as she got to Bala's hut. The next morning, when she woke up, Bala was beside her taking care of her. He had removed the spear, attended to her wound and was feed her herbal medicine and food. She was too weak to talk and after being fed, she slept off. Bala continues to treat her injury and when Princess Adora regained her strength, she thanked Bala for saving her life and for giving her food. She told Bala that she had to leave. She didn't want to transform into a beast before Bala's eyes, but Bala refused to let her go. He told her that he enjoyed her company and that he knew she was a good person if she wanted to be one. Adora smiled. Princess Adora was happy to stay with Bala in his tiny hut, not minding she was a princess. She was happy that he did not mind seeing her as a beast. All she wanted was peace and love. Some night later at full moon around midnight, she turned into a beast as usual. She thought Bala would be scared of her, but Bala wasn't afraid of her. He treated her kindly and with respect. The next morning, Princess Adora woke up in her human form. She thanked Bala for his hospitality. She was so excited and happy that she had someone who accepted her the way she was without getting scared of her. That morning, they needed to cook. So, Princess Adora went to gather some from vegetables from Bala's farm and made some delicious soup to eat with Swallow. As she adding some food in a plate to serve Bala, an old woman, who was, who was looking tattered, came to beg for some food to eat, and Adora gladly gave her some. She offered to pack some extra food for the old woman, and the old woman was deeply touched. She felt pity for Adora. She said to Adora, because of your kindness and humility, I will tell you how to break the curse. You must learn to be humble and compassionate, and from what I see, you're already beginning to be humble. There is only one task left for you, to finally turn back into a human. You must find someone who loves you for who you are, even if you are a beast. He must love you genuinely. On the day of your marriage ceremony, your curse will be lifted. Princess Adora was happy, but a bit confused at the same time. She kept wondering where she was going to find a man who could even want to marry a beast like her. She decided not to think much about it. Days and weeks passed, and Princess Adora and Bala became fond of each other. They became closer and closer each day. Princess Adora knew she had fallen in love with Bala, but she knew Bala liked her, but was not sure if he loved her enough to marry her. Bala already knew about the curse, but did not know how to tell Princess Adora that he had fallen in love with her. Finally, Princess Adora summoned courage and asked Bala that if she did not transform into a beast, would he marry her? Bala listened patiently, and when Adora finished, he smiled. I don't care that you turn into a beast at night. I love you for who you are, he said. Princess Adora was overjoyed. She knew that she had finally found the right person who truly loved her for herself and one who could break the spell. Princess Adora and Bala decided to get married. They went back to the palace and got the king's blessing to marry each other. On their wedding night, it was full moon again. Bala hugged her tightly and told her that he loved her. Adora's heart melted. She realized that Bala's love was true and finally, she felt something leave her body instead of changing to a beast. The next morning, she woke up and found that the curse had been broken. She was so happy and became a new person. Princess Adora, Bala, the king and queen were overjoyed to have their daughter back. Adora became the new queen while Bala became the new king 
and he ruled with wisdom and compassion. On the other hand, Queen Adora never forgot the lesson she had learned, and he always treated her subjects with respect. In the end, Princess Adora's journey from arrogance to humility and her quest for true love not only broke the curse, but also transformed her into a better princess and ruler. And with Bala by her side, they ruled the kingdom with compassion, understanding, and a newfound appreciation for the value of humility. And thus, the tale of Adora, the princess with a horn, no man dared to marry, serves as a timeless reminder of the power of love, humility, and compassion in overcoming even the most daunting of challenges. Thank you.